actual, and it was because of dunks like this one. Watch this dunk by Shaquille O'Neal. This is against me. Did it again, I'm out. See ya. Chump. You're a chump. Why you ain't show up here anyway? Chump. You scared of me or something? That's how I think it is, bro. I think you're scared of me. I'll talk to you later, bro. Peace. As you can see, Shaquille O'Neal has a penchant for tearing down backboards. So the NBA came up with a rule saying that every arena should have another stanchion just in case Shaquille's in town and breaks the rim. This Orlando team has sent off for one. It takes 30 days to get here. But in the meantime, they have this wonderful basket just in case something happens out there and another thing Marv I'm not a chump well I think that's open for further discussion yeah, we can just discuss say, that yeah 550 to go in this fourth quarter Orlando with the ball they lead the Knicks by two foul called Nick Anderson was hacked three, John, Starks. John Starks called for his third his third 14th foul and Anderson, Anderson to the line. Anderson, Royal, Skiles, Turner, and O'Neal now on the floor for Matt Gukas. As close as New York has come, and they keep coming after you, coming after you. They try to wear you down. Orlando has had enough to hold them off and just maintain, albeit a slim lead, that, that lead that they have right now. And they have been able to maintain the lead despite the most ineffective performance in this young NBA career of Shaquille O'Neal. He's two for 12 from the field. Ewing was fouled. And, and not trying to make excuses for Shaquille, but one, he came into the game with the back sprain after the dunk in Charlotte. Secondly, he has been under the weather with the flu. In fact, prior to the game, Ewing makes the move, comes back. Turner right there thought he should have picked up the offensive foul, but instead the block is called. But to go back to Shaquille, prior to the game, he was in the trainer's room laying out on the table, covered with blankets, okay, feeling the effects of the flu. On the other hand, Patrick Ewing also bothered by the flu, started slowly, but has come on. It's been a strong game for Ewing. He has 24 points. Orlando 63, the Knicks 61. Five and a half minutes to go on the game. Shot clock down to eight. Anderson off the dribble. Anderson rebounded by Smith. Starks getting down in a hurry. Changed his mind. He passed on the shot. Now, if he had the touch, he would have had no hesitation, and he would have pumped it. But he's been way off. Starks for three. Yes. John Starks with a three-pointer, and the Knicks have taken a one-point lead. I disagree with what you said last time. I don't think he would have just pumped it. He was waiting yeah. for the right moment to get the open shot so he could knock it down. It was a plan. You're right. Orlando has missed its last seven field goal attempts. Skiles for Turner. And Skiles gets back to it. It's Royal. And it is a blocking foul. Charge to Smith. That's five on Charles Smith. After moving the ball around a few times, left wide open, alone, feet set, Starks get a, gets a clear look at the rim, knocks it down, and he's happy about it. He knows he's been struggling this afternoon from the floor. The Knicks are now over the foul limit. Orlando has three team fouls. And once again, Donald Royal at the line. He is eight. 4-11 from the free throw line. 82% foul shooter. He and Skiles and Bowie are the only Orlando Magic players over 80%. Orlando by one. Anthony and Starks at the guards. Ewing, Smith, Mason up front. That pass thrown too strong. Ewing couldn't handle it. Here's Skiles. Skiles rejected by Smith. Three on two the other way. Anthony for Mason. And he is crushed. 
Foul number 31 by Jeff, Jeff Turner. Turner. His third, fourth team foul. This is where you want the guard to make the decision. Do you take it all the way? Do you pull up and shoot the jump or do you make the pass? That time, Styles elects to take it all the way to the basket. Smith, too big, too much athleticism there for him to get a clear shot at the basket. Mason, five for seven from the line. Game tied at 65, 406 remaining fourth quarter. The Knicks lead by one. The Knicks have won seven in a row. That's a season high. They've won 11 of the last 12. They lead the Atlantic Division. Record of 32 and 15. And a foul caught on the Knicks. That's number four on Patrick Ewing. And Styles isn't going to take a chance. He fires his pass into the post-up area, knowing that he only might have a split second to find Shaquille wide open. The screen along the baseline frees up Shaquille for a split second, then he's going strong to the basket. Shaquille, only a 59% free throw shooter. He's now one for three for the line. There's Tom Tolbert for Jeff Turner. Game tied at 66. Rock, rock, rock. Only five points for Shaquille O'Neal. He's two of 12 from the field and one of four from the line. Ewing putting the move on Shaquille. 26. For Patrick Ewing, the Knicks with a two-point lead. Ewing did a terrific job of putting the ball on the floor. He made Shaquille move his feet. Then when he went up for the shot, Shaquille still had that hand out there to get a piece. Ewing pulled it back, concentrated enough to still make it. And it's knocked away. Ewing and Starks converging on O'Neal. Patrick Ewing does not want to pick up number five. Seven on the shot clock. Shaquille playing with three, Patrick with four. Shot clock, down to three. Anderson! Last touch by Mason. It will be Orlando Ball. Orlando with the full 24. The Magic have missed their last 11 shots. Coming up on Anderson, and a foul is called. Charles Smith is fouled out. That's number six. Well, the decision now for Pat Riley as to which direction do you want to go with. Do you want offense on the floor? Do you want defense on the floor? You've got to be concerned about who's going to run the offense and who's going to get the ball into the certain people. Riley talks it over with his staff and decides to bring Oakley back, who's had just a great game on the glass for the Knicks. Pat Riley with a discussion. Assistant coaches Dick Carter and Jeff Van Gundy, and they make the move for Charles Oakley. Charles Smith fouls out, had only four points, two of seven from the field, but did a nice job defensively. And Nick Anderson is now four for nine from the line. The Knicks take a timeout. 3.04 remaining in this wind out ball game. The Knicks lead by two. And the Knicks still lead by two, but we're rejoining the game with less than 30 seconds to go. The Knicks are up 78-76, one of the lowest scoring games you'll see in the NBA. Patrick Ewing getting the better of Shaquille O'Neal up until now. The Knicks have one full timeout and a 20. Magic with one timeout remaining, and the foul is given. And Greg Anthony was upset with the uh, hit by Kerr and then decided to just pull back. Well, there's no need for that. Greg Anthony has to understand that's what the game's about. Down the end, you talk to your players about being that much tougher, holding the basketball, coming to catch it that much stronger because you know that teams have to foul intentionally, and they're going to foul you hard. They're putting the pressure on Anthony to make the free throws. He is a 68% foul shooter. 
He's two for five today. And here's Doc Rivers back at Rowdy doing some shuffling without Rolando Blackman because of the, the knee injury. Kyle Smith fouled out. Doc Rivers has not played at all in the second half. He picked up four fouls in the first half. Shaquille O'Neal with the rebound and a quick timeout taken by Matt Gugas. So the Knicks with a three-point lead. We have 24 and 7 tenths seconds to go in this fourth quarter. You talk to your team on the foul line. If there's a miss, what you're supposed to do? Almost a mistake by the Magic. When the free throw goes up, Skiles is at the top of the circle. Shaquille secures it. Now, Skiles will turn to the official and call the timeout. Very fortunate because when Shaquille passes it, that would have negated their ability to advance it to half court. Luckily, Skiles called the timeout first. Buka saw the exact same thing, trying to remind them, you got to call timeout. Don't dribble a pass. Now, Orlando would love to get a good look at a three-point shot. However, if they can't find one, they might go for the two and then come up with a, a quick foul, put the Knicks back on the line. They're down by three. Anderson hit one earlier, and he throws an air ball. O'Neal, air ball. Anderson pops it out. Still lots of time, 10 seconds. Now Kerr sets up Anderson for three for the tie. He what great presence of mind that time by the Orlando Magic. They were patient enough to understand how much time was left. They made the most of every opportunity. Kerr, who is normally a three-point shooter, put it on the floor, skipped the basketball across to the wide open Nick Anderson, who had just earlier missed the forced one, but this time, left alone, wide open, he knocks it down. So, Orlando has tied the game at 79. Nick Anderson with a second from downtown this afternoon. The Knicks calling for time with eight and six ten seconds remaining in regulation. The problem right now for the Magic, and I'm, I'm sure Matt Cooper's is going over this in the huddle, if New York should score, they've got to get the ball in and up the floor quickly for a side attempt. They have no more timeouts remaining. In their last meeting, back here in early January, the game came down to a final play. Here's another look, though, as the Magic were able to swing it around. Good play by Kerr who was able to spot Anderson, and he hit from the difficult angle. Well, Doc Rivers did his job. He ran at Steve Kerr because Kerr actually was wide open for his three-point attempt. So Rivers did his job. He ran at the open shooter. He made him put the ball down on the floor and got inside the defense. Kerr did his job by putting it on the floor and spotting an open teammate opposite across the floor. Ironic that Nick Anderson was able to hit two three-point shots down the stretch. Coming into today, last four games, he had missed his last nine from downtown. But Nick Anderson is shooting just over 32% from the three-point line. And early this season, people were amazed how well he was shooting from downtown with range up until the recent slump. Eight and six ten seconds remaining. The Knicks do have one timeout left. Remember last game, seven and a half seconds remaining, one point lead for the Magic. The Knicks win for Ewing. He took it to the basket, but Shaq blocked it. Warning against the Magic. Delay of game warning. They had one to give as Matt Gukas was able to take a look at the Knicks setup. Five starts led by Skiles. Down to five. Ewing. Down to one. He's rejected and we go to overtime. In fairness to Patrick Ewing, he's thrown the ball with very little time remaining on the clock. He's got nowhere to go, so you know that you have to get it up. The fumble caused him to have to hurry and turn right into Shaquille. Credit Shaquille. He maintained his space. He knew that Ewing had to go up. He avoided the body contact and put hands on the ball. 